It's the Green Team, only on Siobhan Live. Welcome back to the programme. Um, I'm talking with Jan Jamil, who is a double major student in environmental management and sustainable development at Murdoch University, as well as Professor John Granger from the university. Once again, good afternoon to both of you. Now, Jan, you were talking about your internship with Green Destinations. Tell me a little bit about Green Destinations, first of all. Uh, well, it's a company that uh, plans green buildings. They will do all the research for you and find out about the location and how they can greenify a greenify <laughs> that's another new word <laughs> for the eco dictionary <laughs> yeah so it's just um they look at all aspects of the building what what kind of building it is where it is and how they can um help make it more green and it's they also have i think a uh, branch in south africa so it's quite international and it uses different techniques but um overall it's just they don't look at just the outside or how it looks but the actual functioning within the building general things like the air conditioning the electricity and try to make it as green as possible to to plan that type of design and what did you learn how long were you there for uh, a couple of months mm. over the summer and uh, i was actually a project manager for um a new initiative it was called the swiss environment initiative and it was an organization. It's all about promoting um, environmentalism into education here in the UAE. Mm -hmm. It was very localized. And uh, the core part of the project was that you had to uh, publish books. There were three books that they were working on, and they were just to try to reduce consumption. There was a book, the first one, about water, and the second was about electricity or energy, and the third one was about waste. Mm -hmm. And basically, the structure of these books are that people here in the UAE have to understand the facts and the figures. Like, on average, when you open a tap, it w it's about 12 liters a minute, I believe. So they don't they don't know something like that. So just to picture 12 liters a minute on an open tap, that c might strike something into someone and actually make them think twice the next time they brush their teeth or wash their hands. And you basically go from the facts and figures to just informing everyone about what happens to it not many people think where does this come from where did this go mm. uh, i mean uh it would be funny to think so but not many people know that the water they get here is from the sea they might expect it but they don't know the system they might not know what desalination is so it's connecting those dots once again exactly mm. and then the final um element basically what really puts it all together it's the fact that these are you offer practical solutions and not behavioral ones because people tend to be afraid of things they don't know. So because it's a relatively new concept, when you uh, when you when they think that their lifestyle is going to change, they're not going to be living the same kind of house, they can't do the same mm. things every day, but that's what they don't realize. So instead of telling someone your 15-minute shower has to now be four minutes, you sort of introduce a flow restrictor or a power mm. shower head. Mm. So you start at practical solutions because that will encourage them more. And then once it's incorporated, incorporated, sorry, into their everyday lives, they expand it, it a outward. Habit. Mm. Exactly, and then it becomes something that they realize they're doing every day. And then you can slowly, slowly turn into a behavioral thing. They know that now they have a more efficient shower head. Maybe they should start reducing their shower time. It, it doesn't. You know, they don't lose anything. I suppose that's the hope, isn't it? That it's a well, kind of a, exactly. a knock-on so, effect. I mean, if it affects one person, then it'll do something in the future even if it's just a little bit and it grows from word to mouth if i mean everything from energy saving light bulbs if you go visit your friend and you notice like a pretty lamp and they'll mention that the light bulb itself oh it's energy efficient and then someone will turn around and be like mm. oh really and it just encourages all the debate so that's where you start and these books are actually they were planned uh, to be distributed in high schools and in universities and also in local companies any company that's wanting to do something environmentally related can have these uh, books on display and they're not made to be complicated they're not made mm. to look too professional if you're giving it to a 15 year old you want them to understand the concept without being overwhelmed with big words or important pictures of machinery i think it, it's it, a fantastic idea so mm. um it's still at the start but it's something that will definitely continue mm. and um obviously it was it was a great experience for you it, yes the practical course. experience yeah i'm just wondering as well it's a question i've asked often many times in fact on this show but it would be great to get some of your thoughts in as well we've we've spoken a lot about legislation and about having rules and laws and um in place to um, regulate or to 
push people to make changes as opposed to them doing it themselves voluntarily. What do you think? Should there be uh, incentives to encourage people to change or should there be penalties um, to penalise people who don't? What do you think? I, I, I would I would go with the penalizing of people. Would you? <laughs> yes, I would. Mm. Uh, I think it all starts there. It, that's what grabs your attention. Even you can have a newspaper that every article is about the environment, but they'll, they'll, if you have the government involved or things like the municipalities and who's, or whoever's in charge of um, the natural things around the country, if they talk about it, then everyone will suddenly, you know, lift in Europe, they listen. It, it just immediately puts a stamp on it that it's important, you have to take notice. And sometimes you need that push, that little, you know, fine if you don't recycle or only have recycling bins. So you're forced to do it right. no matter what, what kind of rubbish you have. If that's your only option, then you must do it because it's, th- it's the basis of everything. What about you, Professor? Are you for, for penalties or incentives? Well, are we talking about as far as students are concerned? Yeah. Uh, I think with, um, I think there is a need occasionally to um, put a penalty on, but it can be done in uh, a variety of ways, um, almost transparent. We all know that the cost of electricity keeps going up. We all know that the cost of fuel keeps going up, and um, those are in fact taxes on on our ability to utilize energy in some form or another. Um, we also could reward, and I think DWA is doing a great job there because the conservation program that they've introduced rewards you by um, helping you conserve water. Uh, the more you can conserve, the less they have to produce and the less energy is being used. Mm. But I think the overarching um, w- concern for me is that we need, we need to do something um, to bring about a change in the way things work in the world. I believe that, uh, and I think Al Gore made the point um, with his film, that we are sitting at a tipping point. Within the next couple of years, we'll reach a point where there's no going back. We will un- be unable to undo the things that we've done. And I think um, students like Jan and others in, in environmental management courses, they have a huge responsibility to keep us off that tipping point mm. to bring us back to Being a stage right. where we can we can still change the world um, uh, we, we, we know what's causing the problem we know what some of the effects are global warming and so on um, we need experts in the field to help us um, change things and to make them better mm. and I'd, as I say to my students when I first talk to them um, I apologise on behalf of my generation We've, we've left an awful mess for you, and what we want you to do is um, to clean it up. And in also, I mean, I'm going to be around for the next, hopefully, next 30, 40 years. <laughs> um, but I'm dependent on people like Jan because my, they are my future. Mm. And uh, when I'm sitting in my wheelchair by the side of the beach, they're supping my cup of tea in the afternoon, um, I'm going to be dependent on the decisions that young people are making today. Um, and so we've got a uh, we've got a responsibility. My generation's got a responsibility to in, enthuse people about the the environment, about changing things, and about sustainability for our globe. Yeah, um, very very well. Wise words there, I think, uh, Professor. Thank you. Um, I have very very quickly one final question. We're a bit over time, but um, I'd like to ask you: What's your green dream, Jan? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my green dream. I I would have to say Green Dream would be maybe everyone doing something. Whatever it is, every single person should do something, no mm. matter how small or how big, because you have uh, contributors of many kind in many ways. So if every single person does something, then that would be perfect. Mm, fantastic. Well, it's been lovely to meet you, and I wish Thank you all you the so very much. best Thank with you. your studies. It's It's exciting to know that... You will be out there making difference, actually. Congratulations to you. Jan Jamil, thank you. Thank you. And, of course, a, a big thank you to Professor John Granger at Murdoch University. I'd like to give out a website if I can, uh, By Professor. all means, yeah. Jan. Well, yeah, what, 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 well, actually, I'll get you to do it, if that's yeah, okay. I sure. don't have it to hand. Yeah. Uh, what's the, the, to find out more about uh, all the various different courses at Murdoch? We have our own website here mm. in the UAE. It's uh, www. 
dot Murdoch Dubai, and that's spelt M U R D O C H Dubai D U B A I, um, and all one word, all lowercase dot a c dot a e. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It's been great to meet both Thank of you. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us on the Green Team. Thank you, listeners. All the best. Green Team. Thank you, listeners.